Many people are afraid of going to the doctor. And many people find the prospect of having to go to the hospital even scarier. Thinking about when you're old, when you cannot live independently any longer, and you have to move to some place where someone will take care of you for the rest of your life, straight out uncomfortable. What many people also find uncomfortable is talking about choices in healthcare. Who should pay for healthcare? And who is being denied treatment? But we, and then I mean everyone in society, need to talk about these things. Because society makes important decisions about this. We, for example, decide who should be denied treatment. Um, but we also decide who is paying for this. For example, society decides whether you, when you're still young and healthy, have to contribute to someone else's healthcare costs. And then the next generation will return the favor to you by paying for yours in 30 or 40 years. Or society could decide that you have to start saving for your future healthcare costs right now and rely on crowdfunding or selling your house when that turns out not to be enough. This is about such uncomfortable decisions. And I'll talk about three of these as examples. First example, many people know the complex emotional situation when a parent or a grandparent cannot take care of themselves any longer. But at the same time, they want to stay and live independently in the home where they've lived for years. When is the moment that you do move to a nursing home or that you move in with a child? You clearly want to live at home as long as possible, but at the same time, you want to avoid the moment that things go really wrong. Many people in the Netherlands, they moved to a nursing home in the last years of their lives. And many people believe that doing so, so the nursing home admission, is really expensive. I'm part of a research group, and we thought so too, until we started looking into this deeper. And we found out that at least in the Netherlands, for the elderly who makes this choice right now, moving to a nursing home the total costs of that are as, a, are as expensive as staying home for these elderly. And the elderly who live at home, they have to go to the hospital more often. The Dutch government still stimulates elderly to live at home longer and longer. And maybe there are many good reasons for the elderly to stay home longer. Maybe they're happier there, for example. But the costs should not be one of these reasons. This discussion is complex because elderly and their family members, they only see part of the total costs. They see the, they see the part that they pay for. And they pay for a larger share when someone moves to a nursing home. So when we keep these costs in mind when we, make it, when we have a discussion about this, and we think we make a fair comparison between the cost of a nursing home and the cost of staying home, actually we don't. We have, and that limits our ability to make the right decision for the right reason. We don't know as much as we think we do about the costs of long-term care in the Netherlands, of nursing homes and home care, but also of other types of care and in other settings. Second example, another complex emotional decision is the decision to take care of a loved one, of a family member or a friend who needs help. And providing this care is really important. So it's, being, it's rewarding to be able to do so. But this caregiving is also physically tough, and it may be stressful. Caregivers are more likely to be depressed. Moreover, it affects their careers. In many other countries, caregivers work less, meaning that they have less income. So while this is rewarding, these caregivers also pay indirectly. They pay with their health, and they pay with their lower incomes. Society sets the norm. Who should take care of whom, how much, and when? In the Netherlands, society has decided it will pay for a nurse who comes in to take over some of the caring tasks. This means that the relatives have to worry less about when, where, and how they are needed. But at the same time, 
they may still provide care, and most of them still do, but it's more likely to be on their own terms. Whether society should pay for a nurse like this to come in, people will disagree about that. They will, people will differ in their opinions between countries and over time. And having a conversation about this with others is difficult. And it becomes more difficult when things become personal, when they become urgent. So we absolutely need to have a discussion about this, so about how the caregiving tasks are being split, before that situation arises. So that, we can take on, so that we can take into account all the costs and benefits, including those of the potential caregivers. So we can also take into account their perspective. Third example, even more uncomfortable, is deciding who, who should be denied treatment. And that's especially uncomfortable, that is especially uncomfortable when this treatment is potentially life-saving. Society decides about this. It decides which patients get priority. We only have a limited healthcare budget. We only have a limited number of doctors, a limited number of nurses, and a limited number of hospital beds. Which patients should we prioritize? And if there's a new machine that promises extra life years, to people with an illness for which there was no treatment so far. Should we buy that machine? That sounds like a no-brainer, until you realize that with a limited healthcare budget, spending some of this money on the machine means taking resources away from other patients. Which patients should we take it away from? Some of these new treatments, some of these new machines are expensive. And usually the discussion that we have about these is whether this is worth the money. And then some people will argue that we shouldn't put a price tag on saving an extra life here. Suppose this new machine that I talked about, suppose that costs 200,000 euros per life year saved. Recent research, however, suggests that if we spend money on existing technologies to buy extra life years, Buying an extra life year is much cheaper. So we can spend 200,000 euros on this one new machine, or we can spend it on existing things and buy much more than one, uh, and, and saving much more than one life year. Still, we go often for this new machine. Why is that? If you look at a comparison like this, that's kind of strange, right? I think there may be a number of reasons. And one of them is that we ask ourselves, is this new treatment worth the money? Instead, we should ask, which other patients could we have treated with this money? And wouldn't we rather do that? Or, if we decide to increase the budget for healthcare when a new technology becomes available, what else do we give up? And do we find it worth giving up? Do we give up private consumption of someone? Do we spend less on good education for children? Or do we cut pensions for people who've worked hard and paid taxes for years? Either way, when we spend more on one type of healthcare, something else must go. These trade-offs between one type of healthcare and another type of healthcare, or between healthcare and education, are much more uncomfortable than having a discussion about money. And it's more difficult to have a discussion like this because you need to be clear about what you give up. But it's also important to have this type of discussion because we need to realize that the money is just a shortcut. And these are the real trade offs that we face. In each of these three examples, the nursing home admission, caring for a loved one, and treatment, society makes a decision. Who should get priority? Who should pay? In each of these discussions, at first it seemed to be about costs. But actually the question we should ask ourselves is, what do we give up if we do this? And is that worth it? Is that worth giving up? 
So the next time you find yourself in a discussion about healthcare, please ask yourselves these questions. Because my examples were all three from the Netherlands, but the underlying question is a universal one. We need to realize that how the costs and benefits of healthcare are divided is a decision. A decision you could be involved in, because it's a decision that is best made consciously, taking into account all of the costs and the benefits. And everyone, especially you, the young. Many of these decisions about healthcare and how it's split have been made generations ago. But they may be revisited, and some of them may need to be revisited because the circumstances have changed in the meanwhile. At the same time, yet we need to realize that we don't know as much as we think we do about the costs and the benefits of healthcare. And we really need to find out about these in order to make better decisions in the future. But most of all, we need the courage to face the uncomfortable trade-offs that underlie the discussions about costs in healthcare that we currently have. Because then, we can reevaluate and rethink the decisions made in the past and find out if this is indeed the best we can achieve. Thank you. <laughs>